unless you write incredibly diatonic music, you've probably felt a little bit intimidated by thinking through the harp pedals and ensuring that your music is playable on the harp. In today's video, we're going to talk about some strategies for mapping out the pedals as you work through a piece in order to ensure that it is playable. Hi, I'm Danielle from Compose Harp and I want to help you learn how to write for the harp with confidence. Today we are going to discuss the layout of the pedals, the function of the pedal chart, and some strategy that I have for mapping out pedals away from the harp. So the pedals are laid around, around the harp with three on the left side and four on the right side. You could come up with a mnemonic for remembering the order of the pedals, but I find it a little bit easier to think of the function. So the middle two pedals, the inner ones, are going to be B and E. So those are the first two flats that you get in a key signature. The next two pedals are C and F, and those are the first two sharps you have in a key signature. The next pedals are going to be D, G, and A, and those are the inner ones that you don't use quite as frequently. So the way of pairing them makes it a lot easier for harpists to think through them as we're changing pedals, and you can also use that as a way to remember the pedals and think through which foot is changing which pedals and ensuring it's all doable on the harp. So if you've looked at harp scores, you probably have seen pedal chart throughout. Why do we have them? What do they mean? And are they something that you should actually include? Yes, yes, and yes. A pedal chart gives us just a little graph to map out the pedals. If you see the example, we have a set of two lines, one down the middle, which shows where the harpist is sitting in relation to the pedals, and then the line shows the middle position or the natural position. So as you map out the pedals, you'll have three lines on the left side for the left pedals, four lines on the right side for the right pedals. Any pedal that is placed above the middle line is going to be flat, any pedal in the middle is natural, any pedal below is sharp. Harpists find it helpful to include the pedal chart at the beginning of the piece and then at major sections throughout the piece. It's kind of a landmark for us just to be able to quickly double check that our pedals are all in the correct position. You can also use this when writing for the harp to map out the pedals as you go, change them, and ensure that you know what the pedal position will be at any given point in the piece. Now, most composers don't have access to a harp just sitting around to be able to test out the pedals. There's a multiple things you could do. There's pedal trackers online. You could build a contraption. The easiest solution I found is to use a dry erase board. Now, you could get fancy and use magnets to slide up and down for the pedal positions. Up, middle, bottom or you could use pennies. I have a toddler, so that's a really bad idea. Um, I just like to use the marker. I can erase a pedal easily, draw it in a different position. So when I'm away from the harp, this is how I keep track of pedals. Now, this is all fine and good, but how do you actually look through it in a score? Let's take a look at an example. We're going to work through Hasselmann's Chanson de May together and see if we can figure out where all the pedals go. Now this piece includes some pedals in the score, but not all of them. Don't do that. If you're including pedals in the score, either include all of them or none of them. But so let's start from the beginning. Looking at the key signature, we're going to set up the pedals using with D flat, C natural, B flat on the left side, E flat, F natural, G flat, A flat on the right side. Now let's skim through the piece. I'm not going to play it because if you're doing this, you're likely going to be looking at the score, not actually playing at the harp to see if it sounds right. Looking through, there's no accidentals on the first line, no accidentals on the second line. At the end of the second line, we see a G natural. So that does tell us we need to change the G flat pedal. Let's write that in the score and make the adjustment on our pedal tracker. Now, as we move on, we have to remember we have a G natural. So the next time we see a G, we're gonna have to think, is it flat or is it natural? On the third line second measure, our G returns, but it is in flat position. So we're gonna have to change that G to flat. You also see that C flat in the marking or in the solfege, do flat. 
this is an indication that a pedal will need to be changed in advance. So in this edition, any pedal that needs to be changed before it's needed is written in, but all the others aren't. I, that doesn't make sense to me, but that's fine. So we'll go ahead and change the G flat and C flat together at the beginning of the measure because the next measure we have a D natural. Now, since D and C are on the same side of the harp, they will have to be changed at different times. So that's why we have the C flat being changed in the previous measure, D natural in the current measure. At the very end of this page, second half of the measure, we have a D flat in the left hand. So we'll have to change our D there. We also have a B double flat. We can't actually play a B double flat on the harp, so that will be played as an A natural. Pro tip, if you're writing things that are inharmonically spelled, just write them the way that they're played. It's a lot easier for a harpist. So we're thinking of that as A natural, which means we'll have to change the D flat and A natural in, in that measure. Moving on to the second page, we see that the A is back to flat and we have a C natural. So let's go ahead and change both of those. As we scan through the rest of this page, it's very similar to the first page. So the pedals are going to function very similarly. We have our C flat, we go back to our D natural. We have our A natural, in other words, B double flat and then we go back to D flat, A flat, and then we have a C natural. This is where the pedal chart comes in handy. Since the score doesn't include any courtesy accidentals, we do have to remember which pedals are changed and which ones are not. So that's the first two pages of Chanson de May. This score is available on IMSLP, so I would encourage you, if you want to practice, go ahead and do the rest of the piece. I will, on my blog, include a marked up copy of this piece. So if you want to ch double check your work, go to my blog and take a look at that score. So I hope this helps. These are my tips for tracking pedals away from the harp. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment and I will see you next time. Bye.